everybody, it's Julian. Um, excuse the mess of hair, I did have a bath earlier. So all the product in my hair went away and it's kind of just crazy. I also did a little touch up. Not the best, but it works. Um, anyway, so today I want to talk about my visit to the surgeon. I did not have the gallbladder surgery today. It was a consultation, um, even though I was under the impression that when I made the appointment, it was for surgery, but I'm not gonna, I try, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to complain about that because it went really well, regardless of the fact that it wasn't surgery. So I went in, and of course, they weighed me. Um. As I said in previous videos, this week has been a struggle. The last couple weeks have been a real struggle between depression and gender dysphoria. So, I did gain some weight. I'm not back to square one, but I gained back three pounds. Because I've been eating like crap. I sought comfort food. I had Ben and Jerry's the other night and I made myself sick. Um, and I haven't been working out like I should, like I, you know, like I planned to. So there's that. So because I was in this cruddy state of mind, um, my mental health affected my physical health. It's gonna happen. And like I've said in other videos, these things are not gonna go away. You know, they're not just gonna go away. My depression isn't gonna magically go away. Um, even when I do transition, my gender dysphoria is probably not gonna totally go away. It'll probably get a little better, but it's not going to go. So, I did gain three pounds. So, I'm at 247. Randomly. Um, so, yeah, three pounds. Um, so, I got to get that back off. So, after all that, they checked my vitals. Everything's good. Um, and then the doctor came in. She said, okay, so everything looks good, and we're here to talk about possible surgery, and I, you know, possible surgery? Like, don't tell me you're not going to do, <laughs> you know, like, don't tell me you're not going to do this, because I'm in so much pain. Guys, I'm in so much pain. The, the, the area where my gallbladder is hurts all the time, and in the evenings, even when I eat great, if I go through a whole week of eating great, I still get sick every night. Every night I get sick. And it's mostly bile that's coming out. So, you know, I was telling her, you know, she was asking me questions about how long this has been going on, how long I think it's been going on, because what I told her is, you know, usually doctors that I've seen in the past have said, oh, it's just your anxiety you know, and left it at that. Um, this, the, the ER doctor that I saw when I thought I was having a heart attack said it could be my gallbladder. So, there's that. And she said, well, there's no doubt, you know, you have gallstones. But I don't feel like it's a good idea to just go ahead with this surgery because there are so many risks with it. And on top of that, she said that the symptoms that I am exhibiting are not typical. They're not like a textbook case. She said, I'm not saying that, you know, you're not, obviously you are suffering. She said, I can see it. I can, you know, when, you, when I, you know, she tested, you know, she felt my side or whatever. 
and she goes, I can tell you're in pain. I am sure you are puke. You know, you are, I don't think you're lying. You know, I don't believe you're lying to me. I'm sure you're telling me the truth. She said, but it's not a textbook case. So that to me seems like maybe there's more going on. Like maybe it's not your gallbladder causing the, you getting sick and the pain could be something else. She said, what you are exhibiting also goes along with, um, with like ulcers and other uh, gastric acid issues. And I'm like, oh great, <laughs> that's not fun. She said, you know, anxiety can contribute to that, so on and so forth. She said, I want to put you on a medication to help with acid um and in two weeks we'll see each other again and depending on what you tell me if it works great then we don't have to do surgery um if it's working but maybe not very well then we'll talk about surgery or if it's not working at all obviously we're going to talk about surgery so there's that. So I have to wait a couple more weeks, take this medication, and then maybe surgery, maybe not. Depends on what, you know, depends on what happens. Um, that's not all I wanted to talk about. Um, this is, of course, a health journey. When I say a health journey, not just physically, but mentally. Maybe spiritually. I don't know if I'm going to talk about my spirituality on, on this channel. I might. I might not. Let's see. Anyway. So, while I was still talking to the doctor, um, to the surgeon, to the surgeon, I don't know what I'm um, she had noticed that my husband had called me he. And for those of you new to my channel, I am a trans man, um, pre-everything currently. So that is part of my journey. Um, so she had noticed that my husband called me he. And, you know, we had started talking about my anxiety. And I had mentioned that some of my anxiety stems from being trans. And she said, oh, I was actually going to ask because, again, she noticed that my husband had called me. And she goes, so I was going to ask you what pronouns you prefer. And I said, he. And she goes, okay. And she goes, do you have a name? You know, do you have a name that you would rather be called? And I told her, it's Julian. And she said, okay. Is it okay if I make sure that this goes into our system? And I'm like... Yes, <laughs> yes, please, that would be great, you know, and that, that was like the entire highlight of that visit was I got validated and I'm going to, I'm going to cry, <laughs> but they're happy tears because I was validated. Since I came out, yes, I've had friends, I have friends, and they validate me. You know, they call me by my name, they use my pronouns, they slip up, but to, to me, you know, I'm, it doesn't bother me when people that I know slip, because I know that it's a slip, it happens. This is as much a transition for them as it is for me, that is my take on it. Um, others in the community don't feel that way, and to each their own. I'm not going to bash anybody for anything, but that's how I feel, you know, when your friends and your family, as long as they're making the effort, I'm happy. Now, if you blatantly disrespect me and say, that's a woman, or, you know, oh, you're just, you know, you're just confused. I'm 30 years old. I'm not confused. <laughs> you 
this is, I'm not confused. This is not a fad. This is not a trend. This is me, you know. And if somebody is blatantly just like, no, that's a woman, you can you can walk out the door. <laughs> you can, and blatantly saying, oh, she, or, you know, hey, girl. And I'm like, no, no. You know, if you're doing that to me, then you can go away. <laughs> You know where the door is. Don't let it hit you on the butt. But I have a really great support system. But as far as like outside that circle, like at the doctor's office or at the pharmacy or just, you know, at restaurants and stuff, you know, just anywhere else, it's really hard for me because I am pre-everything. I, the only thing that is really male about me right now is the fact that I use male pronouns and I have a male name and a male haircut and the only other thing I got is male clothing. That's it. So when I go out in public, you know, and I get stares, you know, from people, they notice that there's this big busty woman wearing men's clothes. And this really manly haircut, you know, this really manly hairstyle. And they notice, they don't say anything, but I can feel, I can feel the looks. And I have like turned my head to see people looking at me and they'll look away real quick. And it's just, it, with my anxiety and me noticing those things, it gets to me. But anyway. I'm not going to put my, I'm not, I'm not going to continue talking about that because I'm going to make myself feel bad. I need to focus on the fact that I was validated today. Hardcore validated. It felt good. And I've been struggling for two weeks with, a couple weeks now with this dysphoria, this gender dysphoria and hearing that validation, having that validation has lifted that for me a lot uh do i am i gonna you know feel it again yeah i'm gonna feel it again because again you know life and going out in public and you know introducing myself to new people especially in a small town like where i'm living it's gonna be hard it's gonna be a pain in the butt and I'm going to struggle. But there are people that are out there that respect me and care about me for who I am. So I have to try and focus on that so that I can fight off the dysphoria, the gender dysphoria. So, highlights. No surgery yet. New medication. Gained three pounds. And got validated as a trans person. So, it is Thursday. Um, so, I do have to finish out the week. Um, I'm going to try to get myself back on track. Um... I say try because, honestly, I'm human. I really can't make promises as far as that goes because who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Who knows what's going to happen in a couple of days. You know, I'm going, I have every intention of getting back on track. So, I really do not mean for this video to be almost 15 minutes long. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, but I kind of went off on a tangent with the whole, with the whole validation thing. Um, I did, but I didn't because it is part of my journey, but tomorrow's a new day. Today was kind of a bust as far as nutrition and workouts, but tomorrow's a new day. <clears throat> so. 
I hope everyone has a good night. And whatever it is you do, just keep going.